Welcome back guys to NunoSolutions.com. My name is Nuno and in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can take the list of employees that we deserialized and save them into a SQL Server database. So the first step is we have to create a database and I went ahead and I installed SQL Server Express and also installed SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to be using SQL Server Management Studio to create the database. You should see it on your screen here. You have to log in um, and the way you do that once you've installed it is you just type in dot slash slash SQL Express, and then you hit connect, and then you'll be able to create databases. So I'm gonna right click the databases folder here. I'm gonna say new database, and I'm gonna call this Nuno Solutions Console App 1. I'm gonna save it. So it creates it for me, and I'm just gonna refresh this folder so it appears in order. I'm gonna expand the Nuno Solutions Console database, and right now there's no tables. So we're gonna actually create a new table, create a new query. The table we're going to create has to be an employees table, obviously, because the objects that we deserialized were employees. So to do that, we're going to say create table and we're going to call it employees. And we're going to have an employee ID and that's going to be an integer. And I'm going to make this uh, column just be an identity seed. Start at one, increment by one. And we don't want this to be null. And so I have a video if you don't know what this does, but this basically makes the employee ID auto generated. And it, it'll be, an, it'll start off with the number one. And then for every other record that it's created, it's going to increment by one. So it'll be like record two, record three, record four. You don't actually, when you create an assert statement, you don't have to specify the employee ID. When you assert in the record it does it automatically so we need first name and we're going to just set that varchar i don't know 50 is fine and i don't want this to be null either so we're going to say not null i'm going to copy and paste this three times to make it a little quicker and we're going to create another column called last name because that's what's in our json data another one called email because that's what it, what's in our json data i'm just going to change this to 100 characters i'll i guess i'll leave first name and last name as 50 characters that's fine i don't see an issue with that i'm also going to add a constraint here I'm gonna, I want to create a primary key for the employee table, which is going to be primary key clustered, and it's going to be employee ID ascending. We're going to go ahead and run it. There we go. We just executed this. I'm going to go to the tables on the here on the left, the object explorer. I'm going to hit refresh, and now we should be able to see our table, and we should have the columns that we want, employee ID, first name, last name, and email. Perfect. This is exactly what we need in order to be able to save our employee objects from our JSON file into the database. How do we actually insert records from C Sharp from a console app into the database? So I'm gonna use, there's actually multiple methods to do this. You can use a, uh, a SQL connection and a SQL command using ADO.net. That's the older way of doing it, but I'm actually gonna do this with Entity Framework Core. So let's hop over into Visual Studio. I'm going to actually close our console app, which we did in the last video. And then first thing we want to do is we want to add a database class, right? A DB context. So we, let's create a folder called data. In this data folder, we're going to add a new class. And I'm just going to call this console app database. That's the, going to be the name of our, our database class. But what we're going to do here is we're going to inherit. For, in order to use Entity Framework, you have to inherit from DB Context. That's like the main base class that, that makes thing, everything pretty much work. Um, if you want to know about, more about it, just look it up. I'm, if you're looking at my screen here, you'll see that Visual Studio is not recognizing this as a valid class at the moment. So let's go ahead and go in, into the light bulb. And it's basically telling us that we have to install a NuGet package of either Entity Framework Core or Entity, or Entity Framework. I'm just going to go with Entity Framework Core for this. I'm going to do find and install the latest. And you can see that it turned green. That means that now the package was successfully installed. By the way, to auto format this, I press Control K then D and I'll show you. So if, like if, if it's not like well formatted, if you press Control K D, it automatically spaces everything out properly. All right, so um, let's declare a property in here called, well, first of all, before we do anything, guys, got to remember that this is putting the console app database class in the console app namespace. We want to get rid of the namespace just so, so that this class goes into the global namespace, right? So that, that, this is how you do it. Now we're going to declare a property for our employees objects, right? So we're going to say public and in any framework, it, when you want to declare base or, or map basically a property to a table within a database, you want to use a class called DB set. And then within, and then it's a generic type. You want to give it the type of DB set that it is. In this case, it's going to be an employee object, the one that we created. And I'm going to make this nullable for now. So the Visual Studio doesn't complain. You don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm going to name this, this property employees, same name as what we gave our database, right? You don't have to, it could be whatever you want, but 
it could practice. So this is this is a property you got to get do a get and set. So that's it pretty much for this. Now the next thing we got to do is tell Entity Framework what's the connection string, right? In order to do this, you have to override. What is it on configuring? On configuring. Yeah, that's it. So if you type, if you just type the word override and then press space and then just type the word on, you'll see, you'll give, Intel will give you a list of different uh, methods you can override. And so this is one of them. And in here, what we're going to do is basically we're going to use this property here, the options builder to tell, and the, the, to tell our database class what connection to use or what connection string rather. So let's delete that line from there because it's not necessary. So we're going to type in options builder dot, and we're going to use SQL server. Now you notice it's not recognizing it. We'll get back to this. I'll show you guys how to do it. But for now, we're options builder dot use SQL server. This is actually going to be a string. The connection string for this is going to be server equals. And the server instance, if you go to SQL server, you'll see that it is. The, so I just want to explain this. So like when you see the dot here, this just means it's like local host or your computer name, right? You could actually type in your computer name if you want it. And then it it's slash SQL express and then you connect. It'll still work. It basically does the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go back into SQL server and just paste that. That's the server we want to connect to, right? Now you use a semicolon and now you got to tell it what database connect to and the database we're going to be connecting to is the database name which so i'm just going to go back into the sql server manager studio hit f2 right click and copy so i can copy the name of our new database and just paste it in our connection string i'm just going to collapse our solution explorer here so we can see see a little bit more of this and then basically tell the connection to use a trusted connection in other words like windows authentication so we're going to say trusted underscore connection equals true that's it that's our connection so like if you look here in sql server manager studio i'm going to disconnect from the server here, the database engine. I'm gonna to reconnect to the database engine and you'll see the authentication type is Windows authentication. I hit connect, it just connects. And it basically uses my login that I have logged into Windows as to be able to get in there. So let me just open this back up. Got our employees table here. Just leave it open up for us here so we can see it. Let's go back and minimize this. And I believe in order to use SQL Server, let's go to NuGet. So let's go into your solution explorer, right click your project and right and then click manage NuGet packages. And then you want to go to browse and let's just search for Microsoft .entity Framework core and we want SQL Server. That's the one we want. So if you look at what we have installed right now, let's just, let me just cut this out. You'll see we have Microsoft Entity Framework Core. If we want to use SQL Server, you have to add the Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server that installs um, the libraries required. So you can use the, the use SQL Server extension method. So click install, click accept, right? And it looks like it's done. So let's close NuGet and check it out, guys. So like I already have a using Microsoft Entity Framework Core namespace at the very top. And you'll notice that this method has turned yellow because it's now recognized as a method of the option build. So when you install the, the Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQL Server NuGet package, it, it adds extension methods. This is one of them. Right, so we're done with the database. We're pretty much done because the only table we really want access to is the employees table. And this property right here will give us the access we need. Let's go back into the program class. And what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to want to basically save the database, right? So to do that, we're going to type console.write line. And I'm just going to say saving data dot 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 so that in our console app, we see that that's that it's doing that and we'll create another one right under right underneath it and it's gonna it's gonna say data saved so we know that when it starts saving when it's done data save of course this is actually not actually saving the data this is just writing to the screen the console app that, that appears telling us what it's doing so we have to declare a variable to access our database so let's start out by declaring a var here we're gonna just call this db for database equals and we're gonna say new and we're gonna just type in console app database that's the name of our database class name press tab to complete it now that we have our database object right we can now add our employees list which is this here right here the deserialized list of employees we can add it to the employees property of the database so we're gonna say db dot or db which is our database employees right which is this a list dot add and then we're gonna start do a parenthesis here so we and i'm just press escape so you can see what i have here so far and we're literally gonna like you can add one by well, you could actually do a for loop here and, and add them one by one but there's actually a method in here called add range add range that lets you add a list so i'm just gonna hit tab and you see now i'm specifying a parameter of employees and now i'm going to save the changes db dot save changes to actually 
host the changes to the database. That This is where the, the, it actually saves the data to the database itself. Um, let's spell this wrong one sec, guys. So it's save changes. There you go. So you can see here, this is the code we have. The application is going to load our JSON file into a string, then it's going to serialize our JSON data from the string into a list of objects. The list of objects, the type is list, a generic list of employee objects. Then we're going to output what's in the JSON file into the screen so we can see what's in it. Then we're going to, on the screen, we're going to say, we're starting to save these employees, the data. We're going to actually process, create the database, right? And we're actually going to add the, all the employees at one shot using this add range method to the employees table and then save the changes to the, in the database. By the way, this, uh, you see those little squiggly lines? You just have to put a question mark here. This just means that this property is nullable. That's it. Let's test this out, guys. And you guys can see that it loaded the file, starting to save the data, and the data was saved. So let's close the console app and go into our database. And now that we're in our database, we're going to do a select. We're going to select all the records from employees. And we're going to run this. And now you can see that we have a list of employees in our database. And they match exactly 100% the employees that we had in our JSON file. And you will see that the employee ID is automatically set. We didn't actually set the employee ID. But because in the database, we told it that the employee ID is to be automatically incremented by one. Start with one and it be automatically incremented by one the database is automatically doing this for us thank you guys that's it for now have a good one and i'll see you in the next video bye